Many years ago, I was given a pair of loudspeakers, and these have performed well over the years, but like all things, they've had their issues and I've had to repair them, and also had the possibility of upgrading them as well. And I thought this would make a, a good topic for a video to show some of the techniques that can be used, not only to repair, but also to improve the performance of those favourite loudspeakers you may have just put up in the, the attic or somewhere else, and how you can bring them back to life again and make them even better than they were before. For anyone wanting to know, the actual speakers are Goodman's Magnum SL loudspeakers, which in their day were supposed to be quite good. So this is the pair of loudspeakers we can see in our living room, and they're spaced nicely apart for a good stereo effect. The first issue though that I encountered with the speakers was that the board on which the loudspeaker cloth or grill was mounted became warped and this looked unsightly. This occurred because the board was quite thin and the speaker cloth was tightly stretched over it. It's now a push fit into the speaker enclosure as you see, but you could use velcro or another means of securing it if you wanted. For the new one, I cut out a thicker board using the old one as a template and bought new speaker cloth and stuck it on. You can get this material from many loudspeaker stockists. If we look at the loudspeaker, you can see the base unit, the mid-range unit and the top range speaker or tweeter. But the mid-range unit failed. The cone was stuck to the aluminium chassis using a water-based glue, and as you can imagine in a domestic environment with damp, over time it came unstuck, and the sound coming out of it was, well, horrible. So I looked at what could be done, and I sent a speaker supplier the dimensions, and they came back with two options for me. One was to just get it going, whereas the other was to improve it. Naturally, I decided to improve it. They advised me though to change the mid-range unit and also the top range one and this would give a more balanced sound. As you can see the speakers fitted in very well with no adjustments needed. Looking a little closer it's relatively easy to get these loudspeakers out. To give you a bit more of an idea let's take one out. These speakers are actually mounted from the front and the whole box is sealed. This makes getting access to the insides a little more difficult and the main way in is through the hole cut for the bass loudspeaker. Nearly there now. As I take the mid-range unit out, I'll just ease it out. Here you can see the rear of the speaker with its large magnet, and then the cone on the front. And here are the connections to the speaker. You can see some of the insides of the enclosure as well, but more of that later. I was very fortunate that this new speaker dropped in very easily without the need for any woodwork. The same was also true for the top range speaker or tweeter. You can also see round the hole I put some foam tapes. This is specialist tape. This is very fine and intended to give a good seal for the box around the speaker. Any air leakage can affect the bass response of the overall system. It was also suggested that I replace the capacitors in the crossover unit. This unit is an inductor capacitor filter that sends the right bands of frequencies to the right speaker unit. Over time the capacitors can degrade, so as the speaker system was quite old it seemed wise to replace them. As you can see, one of the replacement capacitors needed to be doubled up and wired in parallel to get the required value, but overall it was a really easy job to complete. All of this work gave an improvement to the speaker system, but over time I became dissatisfied with the bass response. It should have been much better, as the bass driver was excellent. In fact, some specifications indicated the response of these speakers went down to about 35 Hz. I came to the conclusion that it resulted from the fact that the enclosure panels vibrated, and looking on the internet it seemed to confirm this. The vibrations from the panels would cancel out with the front going sound. So what was the solution? Well it seemed that by reinforcing the panels it would help stop these vibrations occurring. Again I consulted with my loudspeaker supplier and they also suggested using vibration damping or deadening material because this would be a great help as well. So I set about taking the speakers apart again. 
All the speaker units came out, along with the old internal foam that most speakers use inside to cut resonances in the enclosure. In fact, you can see the empty cabinet here and the single reinforcement across the back, which wasn't really sufficient for what was needed. I used MDF board cut into strips for the reinforcing braces. This was supposed not to flex or resonate too much, and as a result this would give the best reinforcement to the panels. But remember to wear a mask when you're cutting this, and if possible cut it outside, as the dust from the board can be harmful. I had planned how to provide the best reinforcement I could by thinking where the additional reinforcements were needed, around what I could do with my limited access. And so I cut the strips to length, although they still needed a little extra work to make them fit as snugly as possible. I glued the new reinforcements in place and used a clamp where I could. If not, I used a weight, and this small socket set was very useful for this. Here you can see some shots of the new internal bracing. You'll see that I've added one alongside the existing brace strut on the back because I'd read that relatively lightweight wood that was seemed to have been used here was not so effective. Much denser woods are better, or MDF which I used seemed to be recommended by many. Having fitted the bracing, I needed to next fit the sound deadening material. This had foam on the top and a bitumastic style material underneath and a self-adhesive layer at the bottom. I think it's a similar approach to that used in cars st to stop panel vibrations. As you see, I placed the material around as many places as I could. With all the vibration damping material in place, the empty space within the enclosure could be filled with the new sound deadening foam and all the speakers refitted. With everything back together again, the next step was to try them out. The panels seemed to vibrate much less, and although I had no way of measuring the change, I think it was a significant improvement. I must add that I'm not a speaker expert, and some of my ideas may not conform to the top audiophile requirements, but what I did seemed to make a great difference and improved my listening experience. I wanted to share what I had done to offer my ideas to others so that they could also look at reinvigorating any old loudspeakers they may have. So I hope that's given you some ideas about what you can do with some loudspeakers. But if you want more information, then head over to the description area and there are links and further details for you there. But also, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much.